The C major scale and C major chord are two of the first things you learn in Western music. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight notes in a major scale, that's why it's called an octave, even though they're actually seven notes apart. Whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. The C major chord has three notes you can think of in various combinations, and they have different distances between them. The bottom two notes are a third, because one, two, three. And the top two notes are another third, one, two, three. While the distance between the outer two notes is, you guessed it, a fifth. It might seem a little strange that a third plus a third is a fifth, but that's what happens when you count inclusively, which secretly adds one to everything. Now these are both thirds, according to the major scale, but they're different flavors of thirds, which you can tell by counting all the keys. The bottom one has two whole steps, or four half steps, while the top one has a half step and a whole step, or three half steps. Together they make a perfect fifth. Perfect fifths are great because the physics of sound makes them resonate really well together. Hear the perfect fifthness of that. Even if I change key, as long as they're the right distance away from each other, the right interval, it's got that perfect fifth sound. They're the framework of most music, and one of my favorite exercises to do on the piano is to just go around finding all the fifths. Anyway, back to our three note chord. A major third is also a major third anywhere on the piano, and you could stack two major thirds together to get an augmented chord. Which can sound unsettling, because instead of a perfect fifth, there's an augmented fifth. And in fact, if you wanted to go up to the next octave, you could think of it as another major third. Because this chord is made up of happy major thirds, yet lacks the tonal structure of a perfect fifth, you'll hear it a lot in dream sequences. It can become unclear where the chord even begins once you've started going through the different octaves because it's the same interval between everything. But while sometimes a chord is used alone as a gimmick in a film, it can also be a powerful force of tension that resolves into a different chord, such as this A minor chord. Minor chords have that nice perfect fifth again, and also both a major third and a minor third, but in the other order. First the minor third, then the major third. I chose A minor because it shares the major third with the C major chord. Different fifths, though. Of course, minor chords would still be minor chords in any key, as long as they follow the right pattern of minor third plus major third. Switch the order and you get a major chord instead. And any fifth is just one note away from becoming either a major chord or minor chord, or maybe some other combination of three notes. Music isn't about individual notes, but the relationships between them. Any three notes can be thought of as a Venn diagram of possibilities, and exploring those connections can bring order and cohesion to what would otherwise be simply noise. <laughs>